Right then, so we're going to start looking at the first part of paper one, looking at natural hazards. The key idea for today's video is that natural hazards pose major risks to people and property and just the basics to do with that. First thing we want to do is define what we mean by natural hazard and then look at the different types of natural hazards that are applicable to us. So the first thing is a natural hazard is an extreme event that occurs naturally and causes harm to humans. But we could also break it down further into a few different categories. The first one is tectonic hazards or geological hazards, and that includes um, areas that we're going to look at, such as earthquakes. We're going to look at a few specific case studies of earthquakes. We're going to look at the effects of earthquakes as well as the responses to earthquakes. We're also going to go over volcanoes and again, how they all work, some of the effects and responses to those. The next one is atmospheric uh, hazards. So we're going to be specifically looking at hurricanes. We're going to be looking at a case study for a hurricane later on in this series. And again, you need to know the effects and the responses to these extreme events. And the last one is geomorphological, which includes flooding. And we're going to look at a flooding example later on. Uh, flooding is a, a, a common byproduct of a hurricane. So you get lots of flooding after hurricanes. Uh, we're going to be looking at a flooding example when we look at UK extreme weather. And lastly, for today's video, we're going to look at uh, why people choose to live in these areas still. So lots of people choose to live and stay uh, in quite hazardous areas. And there's lots of reasons why. We just need to understand that. So the first thing is they don't really have a choice. OK, so they either can't actually move or because they're in that situation, uh, they can't accurately predict the hazard. Now, there's a number of different reasons for this. Okay, they might not move, be able to move because it's expensive. They might not have the money to move to a different location. Uh, it might be lack of knowledge, so they might not have the knowledge of where else they could go or that actually where they do live is a problem. And also, something as simple as the language barrier can affect people moving to a different area. They might be put off, they might not be as confident that they can actually move and integrate into a different area of the world. Some other important ones is that it's actually worth staying there. So the main two are resources and jobs. So there are loads of different resources available for people in those areas. Um, it's really good for farming in areas near volcanoes, for instance, because the soil is very fertile. So people are weighing up that risk. Is it worth staying in an area, um, being able to have good jobs, earn good money, but there's that risk in the background of is there going to be a disaster or a hazard in the future? The last thing is they don't actually want to go. Some of these places are absolutely spectacular. Um, and why would they want to leave? So again, it's that risk versus reward. Is it worth staying there? Is it worth uh, investing time and money and in housing in those areas and businesses in these areas um, and, and before you know, actually an event occurs? And lastly, people can get overconfident with defense mechanisms. So there are defense processes involved. There are prediction elements as well. And people get too confident and feel, well, if anything happens when we can deal with it we've got a far uh, we've got all the resources we need to be actually deal with that situation and, and also like they're very optimistic like the chances of it happen are quite minor it's quite a low percentage that these events uh, could occur so again people are worth uh, and willing to take that risk thanks for watching so that's just a quick summary of what we mean by natural hazards Make sure you subscribe to get these weekly videos straight to your subscription feed. Next week, I'm going to look at tectonic hazards in more detail. We're going to look at plate boundaries. We're going to look at the effects and responses of a couple of different case studies that you need to know for this course, as well as ways on how we can reduce the risk. Again, thanks for watching. Give this video a like because it helps out with the channel.